Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today I would like to talk about a polynomial because polynomials, who doesn't like polynomials? If you don't like polynomials, um, I'm very sad because everyone should like polynomials. And I'm going to talk about, just kidding, I'm going to talk about a specific type of polynomial, which I call the color polynomial. Uh, apparently nobody else calls it the color polynomial. So it goes under the name chromatic polynomial. Uh, so I will stick with that name anyway, but it's a color polynomial. We'll see what that means in a second. So polynomials and colors, it's really, really fabulous. And it was defined quite early on, actually. So um, like a hundred years ago, a hundred a bit, a bit more years ago, um, and we are in 2023. So it must have been in like 20, 1910, roughly. Um, so way before kind of graph theory really got started. And I will come back to that in a second. Anyway, so we're talking about coloring. So we want to count colorings and the coloring is just to give each vertex a color. So in my picture here, I have blue, uh, I have green, and I guess the, the remaining one is red. So it's a three coloring. I have three colors, it's a three coloring. And the coloring is in such a way that neighboring vertices get different colors. That's what a coloring is. So here my blue one and all of its neighboring vertices, which is a green one, and two red ones, they have different colors. So that's a color. And you can check that this is true for kind of everything in this little graph. Here. And the PK, well, PGK is the number of K colorings. The zero coloring is a bit boring. Um, a one coloring, let's think about one colorings. As soon as you have one edge, you can't have a one coloring anymore because a one coloring would be both red, for example, and this can't work. Mm. So uh, as soon as you have an edge, you can't have a one coloring. It's two coloring, three colorings, four colorings. As soon as you have enough colors, namely at least the number of vertices, you always have colorings because just every vertex gets its own color. But the real question I would like to address here, and it's kind of pretty brilliant somehow, is that you have this number of colors. So for, uh, for any natural number, you have a color. And then you have the numbering of those, the numbers of those, and you wonder how they are related. Right? So you could plot those if you want. I will do that in a second on a graph. There will be some number of colorings. And you wonder kind of how, what kind of the curve is you can draw through these colors. Right? Well, is there a curve? Well, there's clearly some curve. Is there some nice curve where all number of colors live on? So here's an example. So the three graphs I have here is the edgeless graph. This is this one here. And then there's a one edge graph, which is this one here. And then there's a line graph which is this one here. And then there's a circle graph, which is this one here. It's just illustrated like this, but it's really just, just a circle. Okay. And the number of colorings is illustrated here. So uh, for the, let me just do it. For the non-edge graph, I can just color everything red, I guess, because there is no edge, doesn't matter. So we have one coloring here, and then you have the next, the two colorings, the three colorings, they're somewhere on this plane. Similarly for all of them, right? For G, we have, uh, for example, it's really easy to count for G, um, the number of colorings is always just given by X to the to the three or K to the three, where K is the number of colorings. So there is actually a polynomial that gives all of these numbers, which is X cubed. Huh? So if you want to count the number of three colorings, you get three cubed because they you're essentially free to associate to each vertex a color. So you get three times three times three. Uh, so that's the polynomial that goes through all the points, right? Remember what I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to line up the points somewhere and I wanted to find the curve that kind of goes through all of them. And it turns out that the curve is as easy as it gets. It's a polynomial. Well, a bit surprising. But it turns out that here we can check, actually, I've written down the polynomials, that the same works in general. So um, one edge, for example, needs to have a root at uh, x equals 1 because one edge means you can't have a one coloring. Uh, similarly, a line can't have a one coloring. A circle can't have a one coloring. A circle also can't have a uh, two coloring because kind of everything is connected around in a circle. So you get another a root here. But it turns out that all other colors line up nicely and you can just compute the number of colorings by evaluating those polynomials at the number of colors, which is exciting, which is just really simple. So the evaluation curve here is the polynomial. <laughs> and the question here is, is it just a coincidence? Of course it's not. Or is there a polynomial counting, uh, a polynomial counting colorings? My 
color polynomial, right? The chromatic polynomial. And there is, and that's kind of the fun. And um, this was defined in roughly 1910, hoping to prove the four color theorem because for the four color theorem, so what you would need to do is you would need to show that for a planar graph G, a P of what is it four is non-zero, right? So four is not a root of that polynomial, then it would be done. Turns out that this is really hard, but still the polynomial is still uh, very interesting. I say it again, how ridiculously great that is. We'll have to form a theorem in a second. So the approximating curve, which could be anything through all these infinitely many points actually is a polynomial, right? So that's just really, really fantastic. And you could compute that pretty easily um, by the deletion contraction algorithm and it works as follows. So let's say you want to compute um, the, the polynomial associated to this graph. So you pick any edge you want, doesn't depend on the choice of your edge, and you either delete it, that's going in this direction, or you contract it. So you just merge it together along the edge, and this is going in this direction, and you put a little sign whenever you contract. So that's why I have those little signs here. And you continue, just choose the next edge, choose the next edge, choose the next, uh, next edge, until you're down to line graphs or something with a, with a, a circle. And then the rule is pretty simple. Whenever you have something with a circle, it dies. It doesn't contribute anyway, because if you have a circle and you take this adjacency relation uh, serious, then this has no coloring, right? So the circles just die, fine. And the um, the trees, so the, the, the things you see here, they get just this polynomial associated. So you got a number of edges here and number of vertices like this. So vertices minus one times X. So loop is zero, vertices minus one is x, and then you just take the sum of all of them. So x cubed, and the cube factor twice uh, the, the square factor and once the other factor, and we just count the signs. So let's see. So minus plus plus, so this gets a minus, uh, minus, this gets a minus. So that's why this appear with a minus, and then this one gets a plus, and this one here gets a minus minus with a plus. And this is then the polynomial you get. So very explicit recursive formula to compute the polynomial. Say it again, the approximation curve is a polynomial, which is already fantastic, but you can compute it kind of in this recursive fashion. And yeah, so let me just spoil the whole story now. Oh, 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 what a surprise. Um, there exists a polynomial. I say it again, this is really surprising. But uh, kind of from how I motivated the video, I guess it's not surprising anymore. <laughs> there exists a polynomial associated to any graph such that evaluating at k is the number of colorings. And that one is called the color polynomial or the chromatic polynomial. And it can be computed in um, quite, quite easily. The runtime, if you wonder, is pretty bad. So it's something like the golden ratio um, to the n squared. So it's, it's, not, it's not really great. So where n is the number of as the edges, uh, so vertices squared. And this is really, really just very slow. Um, so here's two to the n in my little log plot. So log plot means you take the log of the y-axis and two to the n in this uh, illustration is almost not distinguishably, uh, distinguishable from n squared. And here is my <laughs> computation factor, which is just uh, really, really large. So it's, it's roughly 1.6 n squared, which grows just <laughs> devilishly fast. So kind of a little problem here. It's absolutely great statement. There's one polynomial. The polynomial tells you all colorings at once, but computing it is a bit, it looks innocent, but it's a bit difficult. It's kind of there's some complexity involved. You can't somehow get rid of all the complexity. Um, and in some sense, I wanted to say that the graph polynomials are for easy problems, uh, but the runtime for this polynomial is really horrible. So what does easy actually mean here? And in this sense, I would like to use easy in the way that it encodes all colorings at once. And of course, there's a price to pay if you encode all colorings, right? So for all n, so for all k, sorry, you have just all colorings at once. So there's some price you need to pay. And I would still call this an easy problem because you kind of solve infinitely many problems at once. And if you think about this as solving infinitely many problems at once, then maybe then this one is not so bad anymore. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.